Hey everybody, let's start with another leak code question today. Today is leak code 198 house robber and this is a part of the blind 75 lead code questions. The blind 75 is basically just a list of 75 really common interview questions that you might see that'll really build the foundations of what you need for coding interviews. So anyways, let's take a look at this problem. You are a professional robber planning to rob houses along a street. Each house has a certain amount of money stashed. The only constraint stopping you from robbing each of them is that adjacent houses have security systems connected and it will automatically contact the police if two adjacent houses were broken into on the same night. So you're given integer array nums representing the amount of money of each house and you have to return the maximum amount of money you can rob tonight without alerting the police. So if you think about it, you know, this is a problem where you have to maximize some given output. So let's take a look at this sample input of nums. We are given an array, and pardon my poor drawing, but one, two, three, one. This is our array. And now we need to see what's the maximum value that we can rob and then, you know, not alert the police so we can get away and use all our stolen money. So first, uh, the output is four. And the explanation they give us is that if we rob house one, so that's at index zero, if you rob house one, where our money is one, then we can't rob house two because you know you can't rob two houses that are next to each other according to the problem. So if we rob house one, the only house that we can rob after that is house three, and the value of that is four. But okay, suppose you started at house two, right? If you started at house two, then you can't rob house one or house three, which means the only other house you would be able to rob would be house four, and the total value of that is three. 4 is greater than 3, so you clearly end up uh, seeing that the maximum value that you could get is 4. Now, this might lead you to think that a way to solve this problem will be to, simply put, just go through every possible combination of houses that you could look through, right? Because suppose there's only two things you could do, right? You could either start at house number 1 or house number 2. <laughs> If you start at either, of the <coughs> excuse me. If you start at either of these houses, um, then your path for the rest of the thing is pretty much set, right? Because if you start at house one, that means you just go every other house all the way until the end. And if you start at house two, that means you go every other house all the way until the end. Sometimes you might get more value out of starting at this house. Sometimes you might more get value starting at this house. But how do you actually tell, right? And how do you do this efficiently? Because brute forcing it might not be very efficient. And that's where something called dynamic programming steps in. Dynamic programming. And I'll talk about this in just a little bit, but if you're watching this video, you probably already have a little bit of an idea of what this is. But let's look at this problem and generalize it. So looking back, right, um, let's see how we can actually make sure that we're going along the most optimal map, op most opt optimal path. So, if you're, suppose you're at the nth index, right? At the nth index, or like the nth house. If you, you can do one of two things. You can either rob this house, or you don't rob this house. If you rob this house, this means that you can't rob n minus 1 or n minus 2. These are not available to you. Oh, not n minus 2, sorry n minus 2 or n plus n minus 1 or n plus 1. You can't rob either of these houses. But what you can do is rob n minus 2 and n plus 2. So you have to figure out, all right, is it more value for me? Is n plus n minus 2 greater than stealing from, I don't know, n minus 1 and n minus 3? Is it greater? Where do I actually get more value from? Do these two houses have more value or do these two houses have more value? Now, we don't want to start just randomly from the middle of the array, right? Because we want to start from somewhere in the beginning, either the first house or the second house. And depending on where we start from, we'll know whether we're getting the maximum value or not. So let's start by looking at, uh, you know, what happens at the zeroth. So suppose at the zeroth, the zeroth index, there's only one way that you can actually, there's only one maximum amount that you could get, right? At the zeroth index, the maximum value that you could get would be houses, or it's called nums, right? The array that you're given is called nums. 
is num0 because there's only one house and there's only one way to rob from this. At the first index, there's two possible options for the maximum value. Either it's num0 or it's nums1 depending on which one is greater. Correct? Then what is it at the second index? At the second index, now you have a few options, right? You either have a value of nums2 plus num0 or just nums1. Correct? Because if you pick what the house that's at the second index, that means you can't pick the house that's at the first index because they're next to each other. If you pick this house, you cannot pick this house or this house because they're next to each other. But you can pick this house. So the second index, the maximum value that you can get is, you know, it's the maximum of this, of this little formula right here. At the third index, at the third index, the maximum would be the, the numbers at the third index. It's the numbers at the first compared to numbers at the second index, right? And then, you know, if you keep going, that's not how you spell fourth. Fourth index, it would be the maximum of the numbers at four plus the numbers at two compared to the value of the third house or the not at this point it doesn't become numbers um, three we're going to be storing this value um, this value will be in some other array so and I'll talk about that just right now so you know the third index the maximum value will be the value of the third house plus the value of the first house compared to the maximum value that you would have gotten at the second index. Now you could do all of this recursively, but what we do to make it more efficient, and you should see that, you know, this is kind of like recursion, right? Because numbers of two is equal to is equal to this is equal to this. The numbers of three will be equal to this. So you're recursing, and you don't want to keep recursing on and on and on without storing any values because that's inefficient. So what we could do is do something called dynamic programming and storing the values that we get. And we do this in something called a DP array. And this is essentially just a way of storing all the values that you've recursed to so far. So we would start off by saying DP of zero is just numbers of zero because of what we established over on the right side. Then DP of one is the maximum of the value of the houses either index 0 or index 1. dp of 2 is the maximum of nums 2 plus nums 0 compared to nums 1. And you know, if we were to generalize, dp of n is the maximum, and this isn't is the maximum, and this shouldn't even say nums, this should be dp of 1, is going to be the maximum of nums n plus nums n minus 2 compared to the dp of n minus 1. And that's going to be our general formula. We're going to go through and, you know, we're going to compare at each index to see, all right, is it going to be more value for me to take this particular house or the house that came before it, or the house that came, you know, after it or whatever. And we'll do that. And once we're do, done recursing, we're going to have our dynamic programming array sorted. And then to get the answer, all we have to do is just return the last index in the dynamic programming array. And this will be our answer. All right. Now that we kind of have a general solution idea, let's actually go and implement this in code. All right, so I'm going to be writing out the solution in C++, but you should be able to pretty easily adapt this to Python or Java or any other language because there's not a lot of C++-specific syntax being used here. 
So first, we're just going to create a variable called n, and this is just going to be the size of our array that's given to us because I don't want to have to keep on saying nums.size when we use it in code. Then we're going to check for some base cases because if n is 0, um, then we just want to return to 0 because there's no value that you can get. Um, you know, otherwise, if n is 1, then it's pretty simple because we can just return nums, not 1, num 0 because there's only one house, so we're already done. Now, let's actually start making our dynamic programming array. So, like I already mentioned, the at the zeroth index, we're going to have to only put in the house that we had at the beginning, right? The only house value that we have, the first house value. Then, dp of 1, this is either going to be equal to, um, you know, the first house's value or the second house's value, depending on which one is more, because that'll make sure that we're getting the maximum value without taking from adjacent houses. Now that we have this, we can start initializing the values for dp of 2 onwards. So, you know, all the way up to dp of n, or should be dp of n minus 1. But that's just how indexing works. Anyways, so for int i uh, equals 2, uh, equals 2, i less than uh, n, i plus plus. We're going to say dp of i is going to be equal to the maximum of nums i plus dp i minus 2 dp i minus 1. Just like we saw in the little whiteboard section of this video. And then once we're done, all we have to do is do return dp i minus 1, not i minus 1, n minus 1, because this is the last element in the dp array. And we should pass all test cases. Oh, oops. Um, yeah. Yeah. So now that I fixed that minor syntax error where I hadn't actually initialized the array, it appears that our code actually works. And now if we submit this, hopefully it passes all test cases, and it does. And, you know, runtime at 3 milliseconds, only faster than 41.63%. Um, there's definitely faster ways that you could do this. I think, but if you look at the actual time complexity of this problem, right, of this solution, we see that we actually only have one for loop that's going n times, so our time complexity is going to be big O of n. And if you also want to take a look at the space complexity, we're again going to have a an array that we're creating that will have n elements, so our space complexity will also be O of n. Now that we're done, that's the solution. This is a basic uh, introduction to dynamic programming. This is one of the easier dynamic programming questions on lead code. Uh, if you want some more practice, then I'll leave a link to the blind 75 lead code questions in the description down below. And if you have any specific questions, leave them in the comments or join my Discord server and ask them in there. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and actually learned something. And I hope to see you in the next video. Have a great day. Thank you for watching.